God, in the news agents, have rubber gloves will travel. How clever, I thought. I do think a sense of humour is so important. It shows a person is happy in their work, offered Mrs. Fosdyke. She couldn't help sounding patronising. She knew she was a woman of importance. The woman she was talking to was only important because Mrs. Fosdyke was talking to her. It was the scheme of things. I asked you here today because the rest of the week is hell for me. I have so much on. She smiled. Dorothy Smart admired Mrs. Fosdyke's coiffured hair. Her eyes then drifted to the flamingo pink long nails as limply Mrs. Fosdyke shook her hand, their perfection at odds with the chaos of Mrs. Fosdyke's busy life. You say you live on the Percival House estate, so that's not too far away. The bus route, I'm told, is quite nearby. Do you know, I haven't been on a bus in years. She sighed. The look was thankful, rather than one of longing. Dorothy smiled and nodded. Anyway, you said five pounds. Well, we paid Mrs. Bliss four pounds, but, well, there you are. I'm sure we can stretch to it. Dorothy smiled, surveying the expensive soft furnishings, the antique furniture, her shoes sinking in soft pile carpet like feet in golden sand. The word stretching seemed at odds with the affluent world of Mrs. Fosdyke. Things have tightened up for us all these days. Sometimes it's difficult making ends meet, Mrs. Fosdyke added. Dorothy nodded again and looked back in agreement. But in her heart, she felt Mrs. Fosdyke could make ends overlap and still have something over. You mentioned... References, smiled Mrs. Fosdyke. Dorothy fumbled in her handbag and pulled out an envelope. She handed the three neat references to the Talons. I see you've moved around quite a bit. I suppose that's with your husband's work. It's just the same with my Pauline's husband. He's had to move to Scotland and take a £15,000 drop in salary. I don't know how they cope, she added. Dorothy frowned and bit her lip in sympathy. With worries like that, Dorothy knew she would hardly want to listen to her problems. Oh, and then we had that awful time last year when we had to part with the dear old Rolls. Mm, oh, now we only have the BMW and the Mercedes. The gardener cleans those, so that's one thing off your list, dear. Dorothy shook her head with concern. Yes, it was tragic losing the rolls, but you can't have everything, she said philosophically. So shall we say Monday at 9.30, dear? I go to the gym normally from 10 till 12, but this Monday I'm shopping for holiday clothes. Barbados, she informed. So I'll be gone all day. So when you leave, will you just pull the door to, dear? Dorothy smiled, pleased she had passed her interview. Soon, Mrs. Fosdyke showed Dorothy around the house she was to care for. When the tour was completed, Mrs. Fosdyke pointed out where all the cleaning items were kept. The hoover is an old one, but in perfect condition, she declared. Dorothy's heart sank. She looked at the old, poor, upright machine, wires fraying, the plug chipped. No flamingo nails had ever graced this workhorse. Closing the cupboard, Dorothy contemplated on all the old machines that had nestled in her rubber gloves. I suppose your work keeps you fit, dear, suggested Mrs. Fosdyke. Dorothy nodded and smiled and went to speak, but the telephone rang out. Oh dear, that will be Panny. She will want to know what time to pick me up for bridge this afternoon. Oh, hello, darling. Yes, just a minute, love. I have the new cleaner here. Yes, yes, just a moment. I'll just say bye-bye. Dorothy opened the door and waved goodbye to Mrs. Fosdyke. And soon Mrs. Fosdyke was back talking to her friend. 
Yes, she seems okay. A bit dull. I thought she might have been more fun. Yes, that's right, the one I saw in the window, yes, in the shop. Well, if she comes up to scratch, try her out. She lives on that estate place, you know. Yes, I know. Mm. And uh, she's coming on the bus. So, uh, there we go. We'll have to see. So, I'll see you later then, dear. Bye. On the bus to her 9.30 appointment on Monday morning, Dorothy watched people dash on and off in the pouring rain. Arriving at the large door, Dorothy's wet hand lifted and rang the bell. Soon it opened, and a fraught-looking Mrs. Fosdyke greeted her. Oh, dear, I've got such a problem. My nail polish just won't dry, she informed. Dorothy went to walk in, but the claw-like nails seemed to come forward, pushing her back. Oh, can you come through the garage, dear? You can leave your wet coat and things in there. Dorothy smiled. She understood and quickly walked round in the rain to the garage. The door open, she edged past the Mercedes and walked to the utility door, awaiting Mrs. Fosdyke. Mrs. Fosdyke opened the door to the utility and stood there holding her hands as if she were about to render a Tommy Cooper impression. I'm in a dreadful hurry. I've left a list of things I want you to do today, dear. Leave the windows this week and clean the brass work if you would. I've put the liquid and the rags out for you. Oh, it's such a nuisance. I've got to drive that brute of a car today. Terry has taken the BMW. Dorothy pushed her hair behind her ears. She was now ready to start. Then, from her handbag, she pulled out her rubber gloves. She had taken her blue pair today. She had found the blue ones had a calming effect upon her. The pink cheered her. The yellow made her feel vibrant and full of energy. No, Mrs. Fosdyke demanded the cool blue. Dorothy picked up the extensive to-do list that was lying on the work surface. Right then, dear, I'll be off, so just pull the door to as you leave. I'll show you how to use the alarm on Friday. Oh, and by the way, I've run out of milk. Either way, I thought you wouldn't want to stop for tea and coffee in just two hours. She smiled. Dorothy mirrored her smile and shook her head. Yes, I thought so, Mrs. Fosdyke finished. In truth, Mrs. Fosdyke had plenty of long live milk, but she didn't want her new cleaner to think she was a soft touch. Besides, she was paying her for those two hours. When Mrs. Fosdyke had left, Dorothy flexed the gloved hands and set to. She would give the house a Rolls-Royce treatment. At five o'clock, Mrs. Fosdyke returned, all shopped out. Leaving her designer shopping bags in the hallway, she walked into the lounge. At once, she could sense the place was cleaner, and there was a wonderful fresh fragrance, too. Walking into the kitchen, she looked about her. It was perfection. The telephone ringing took her back into the hallway. Oh, hello, darling. I know what this is about. It's your bag. Yes, you left it in the boot. I'll pop it round tomorrow. Yes, when we have coffee. The cleaner. Oh, marvellous. The place practically shines. Mm, yes, I'll tell her to come round and have a chat to you. Placing the receiver down, Mrs. Fosdyke walked back into the kitchen to make herself a nice cup of tea. Near the fridge, there was a note. Dear Mrs. Fosdyke, I popped out and got you a carton of milk. I thought you'd like a nice cup of tea on your return. Mrs. Fosdyke smiled. How kind, what a sweetie, she said out loud. Walking to the kettle, she placed the note down. There was a pierce on the other side. It read, The Dom Perignon was quite chilled when I opened it, 
but it did only have two hours in the fridge. Personally, I prefer a Paul Roger or a Bollinger. But Dom is still very special. You will find I have done a splendid job of cleaning your house. You will also discover I have cleaned out all your old jewellery and some small choice items from your husband's collection cabinet. I don't approve of smoking, but those snuff boxes are works of art. I have a great appreciation for anyone who has turned their work into an art form. Poor Mrs. Fosdyke. She gasped. Her flamingo nails clutched at her breast. Dashing upstairs, her worst fears were confirmed. The place was immaculate, but her finest jewellery had gone. When the police finally appeared, they explained how Dot Smart had been cleaning up for years. She always used a different name and had many disguises. Poor Mrs. Fosdyke looked at them in despair. Conchita Smartetta was one alias said the one officer. Credit where credit is due, though. She'd be a jewel of a cleaner if she wasn't a jewel thief. Mm -hmm.